Hey everybody, Tim Krause. Uh, I'm doing a video today uh, in response to a couple of videos that I received. I have to tell you, we're we're calling this video, we're responding to this, or in this video, to what I'm going to call Donnie Reagan Gets Excited. And uh, he, you know, I he's just a, the gift that keeps right on giving. I'm going to show a couple of video excerpts right quick for Donnie and and then we'll get into them. We'll talk about them a little bit. This is going to be a little bit more um, interesting, or a little bit more of an explanation. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and roll the Donnie videos, and we'll let you guys see those. And then we'll come back and we'll address those, and we'll start we'll start from scratch. We'll take that on. So here's the videos now from Donnie Reagan. Let's read this in, in Leviticus 20 and 25, and then we'll pick up again on Lord willing. You shall therefore put difference between clean beast and unclean, between unclean fowls and clean. And you shall not make your souls abominable by beast or by fowl or by any manner of living thing that creepeth on the ground, which I have separated from you as unclean. So certain seafoods the children of Israel are not allowed to eat. Depending on whether it chewed the could or whether it had a parted hoof. Many, many fowl that God divided said, this is clean, this is unclean, this is clean, this is unclean. We say, how in the world did they know it? I'll tell you how they knew it. God had one man. That man's name was Moses. And Moses was a prophet. And God told Moses to tell them which one was acceptable and which one wasn't. Now remember, they've got to take this one man's word for it. Now if some of the message people today would have been there in the days of Moses and they'd have walked up to Moses and said, I want scripture. I want scripture to show that this and this and this is unclean and this and this and this is clean. Who do you think you are? to tell us what's right and wrong. I want at least three witnesses in the Bible. There wasn't no Bible. Come on, don't look at me funny. God said by the mouth of Amos, surely the Lord your God will do nothing, nothing, nothing until he reveals his secret to the servants, his servants, the prophets. Right. Well, I think, uh, you're a prophet? Oh, well, Donnie, what do you say? It don't matter what I think. It don't matter what you think, or you, or you, or any of the rest of you, as far as that goes. But God had a man, and that man would say, don't do this, this is, this ain't, this, 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 this. Oh, I mean, friends, some of the message people died a heart attack. There ain't no way they could have lived under the stress. Bless God, I'll believe Brother Brian whenever he's got a scripture for every quote. And where did you get that at in the Bible? It's sad to say it, but some of our message preachers are preaching that Tommy Rot. I don't think they ought to be in the pulpit. It's evident they know what a prophet is. Mark 16, 17, and these signs shall follow them that believe. And let me make a challenge to those of you that are leaving the message. You want to run your mouth and say we're wrong and we're this and that and the other. Then if you are the believers and we're the false ones, you do the signs. Let's see God among you. And until you can prove it, leave us alone. Oh, well, God hasn't called me to do this and that and the other. If you're a believer, he has. So if he ain't called you to do it, that means you're an unbeliever. Some of you people think you're sent to pull us away from this false prophet as you believe it and pull us away from this cult as you believe it that if God is with you, where is he? You don't prove God's with you because you got a website. You don't prove God's with you because you can't prove this and that and the other. If God's with you, then let us see him manifest himself. Come on, saints. 
I tell you one thing, my God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He has never changed. He's still healing the sick. He's still saving the lost. He's still baptizing with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. It comes in the bride's matan. Our God is a healer. Our God is a deliverer. Our God is a savior. Oh, hallelujah. That's the matan he gave to his bride. Okay, so b- before we get started, there's a couple of housekeeping notes I wanted to make. You know, I, I do these videos. This is not my full-time job. I'm this is this is not what I do for a living by any stretch of the imagination. I I don't I'm I'm not a slick videographer. Uh, people have made comments that you know, boy, you you know the production value. I mean, if you take a look behind me. Uh, you know, it, it's just a room in the house. It's not a, you know, I don't have a studio or have any of that equipment or do any of that. I, I just put these together uh, in the hopes that people will listen to them and that they'll get some value out of them. They're not intended to be slick in their nature. It's not intended to be a huge, a, a huge production value. So my apologies. Bear with me. We're just doing this out of our house and out of my house and it's just it's just a room in my house. So so bear with me and forgive me for the for the not very professional or not very slick type of video production value that we have. But and I wanted to mention that cuz I I received that feedback. So please forgive me for that. Also want to let you know that I'm going to put the study notes up here as we go through this, but you can see by that video that we just played for Donnie Reagan why I call this Donnie Reagan Gets Excited. And you can hear the people in Donnie Reagan's assembly, the amens and the, you know, all the, the support for Donnie Reagan and what Donnie Reagan is saying and, and why his assembly thinks that it, they're just so involved with what he says, not thinking it through, we, and we understand that and appreciate that. We're going to address a couple of things. First things first. We we are guided by Scripture. This, and I've said this many times, this is the Word of God. This is our absolute. Anything on top of this, anything that disagrees with this, anything that would say this isn't true, anything that would be extra scriptural is not our absolute. We believe it. Now, Donnie gives us grief a lot. And one of the things he gives us grief about is, you know, he talks about Noah and he talks about Moses. And, and by golly, there was no scripture leading up to that to genuinely prove that Noah and Moses were prophets of God. Well, the truth is, and I'm going to go back to Isaiah, when Isaiah said, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, what we know it, when we go back and take a look at what we see, and, and in First Samuel, third chapter, uh, starts at about 18 or 19, when, when uh, Samuel says, uh, and what, what Samuel said came true. God did not let his words fall to the ground. And that's how the people of the nation of Israel knew that he was established as a prophet of God. So it's really easy. It's, it, it's, it's very, very simple. We take a look at what happened in Moses and in Noah's time, and we read the scripture. Noah said that there would be a flood. Sure enough, there was a flood. We, it's historical. We can see it. Moses said things were going to occur. Moses, as an example, separated the fowl. Don't do this. Don't you know? do that instead. God gave Moses those things in Leviticus and in Deuteronomy, and God basically gave him the 613 tenets of the Mosaic Law. And he basically wrote those things down and gave them to the church. Why do we know that those things are, you know, what God gave him? Because they were confirmed by prophets afterwards, because because God, it's talked about in the Bible, where when people went away from those 613 tenets of the Mosaic Law, they were punished by God. And the whole Old Testament is a series of this. We know that in the Old Testament, there were only two ways that God could talk to his people. One of them was through specific instructions by the prophets 
uh, or by God through his prophets. The other one was by the high priest in the Holy of Holies. Uh, but we know, and here's what's interesting. The message misses the point of transition between the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. And it's really unfortunate. Here we have Donnie Reagan talking about as an example why we don't, you know, see that God sends everything through his prophets. Well, he did in the Old Testament. You bet. He absolutely did. But you see, there's a point of transition in the Bible, and I've gone through this before, and I'll put the link for the video that describes it down here in the description. But essentially, God did send everything through prophets until the fulfillment of the, the scriptures when Christ died on the cross, when Christ was on the cross, then he said, it is finished. All things were fulfilled that had been talked about by the prophets and by the law. When that moment occurred, two different gospels now, Matthew talks about it a little bit differently in that he says, the curtain in the sanctuary tore from top to bottom, exposing the sanctuary. No longer was there a requirement for a human intercessor between God and God and his people. But you see, Donnie Reagan wants to, he, that, that intercessor has to be there because William Bradham proclaimed himself as an intercessor. So you totally blow past that, minimizing the word of God, minimizing the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross. This video is not about that though. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about how Christians are supposed to treat one another. It's interesting because we have St. Paul and Christ. We have their words. Here's what St. Paul says. Uh, the Apostle Paul says in Ephesians chapter 4, And be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving one another, just as God also forgave you in Christ. We have First, first Corinthians. This is the 13th chapter. I'll start at verse 1 and go very quickly. If I speak human or angelic languages but do not have love, I'm sounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so that I can move mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. If I donate my goods to feed the poor, and if I give my body in order to boast but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, love does not envy, love is not boastful, it is not conceited, does not act improperly, is not selfish, is not provoked, and does not keep a record of wrongs. Love finds no joy in unrighteousness, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends, but as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for languages, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when the perfect comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put aside childish things. For now we see indistinctly in, as in a mirror, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I know will know fully as I am fully known. Know these, now these three things remain. Faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. We have Galatians chapter 5 verse 15, but if I bite, but if you bite and devour one another, watch out or you will be consumed by another. Jesus talks about the same thing. We have Matthew chapter 7 verse 12, therefore whatever you want others to do for you, you also the same for them. This is the law and the prophets. Basically Jesus is telling us the fulfillment of the law and the prophets is to love one another and do unto them. Okay? Jesus also says, and again I've covered this in a multiple multitude of areas, Matthew 11, Luke 16, the law and the prophets were until John the Baptist. Jesus in Matthew says, uh, anybody who has ears should listen. Paul also reaffirms that in Hebrews first chapter, first verse, when he says, the prophets and the law were until John. And now we have the word, words of Jesus Christ, we have the Word of God confirmed for us by the Holy Spirit which was given to us on the day of Pentecost. By the way, the Spirit on the day of Pentecost is exactly the Spirit that is, exists today. Unlike what William Branham taught, which opposes the Word of God, William Branham taught that the Spirit in the day of Pentecost will not work for the Spirit for today. That's not true. That's not here. There's nothing here that says that. That's Branham, and it's false. 
But what did William Branham say about loving one another? Thirteen times William Branham spoke to meetings telling them, Hey, look, don't leave your churches. If you don't understand my doctrine and your church teaches something other than my doctrine, don't leave your churches. Be the spirit-filled one and, and grow your church. Stay in your church. 192 times, William Branham told people attending his meetings to separate themselves from those who don't didn't follow his doctrines, often telling people to leave their assemblies or to leave their churches. Now, why do we say this? What we find in the message is that when people leave the message, horrible things happen to them. Horrible things happen to them we find as an example that people are families and friends of that particular person who has left that message assembly are given permission over the pulpit to shun that person and not speak to them ever again they are no longer in the assemblies and they, and and ministers use william branham quotes and william branham sermon statements to back that up as proof texts go ahead and you know separate yourselves 192 times he said separate yourselves because those people don't have my message separate yourselves because that if you don't believe the message of the hour then you don't you know that that spirit on the day of Pentecost has nothing to do with today wouldn't be adequate for today William Branham even said if Moses were alive today he'd have to or I should say Donnie Reagan said if Moses were alive today he'd have to pay attention he'd have to believe the message Donnie Reagan said that in a sermon a while back. But that fault lies flies in the face of, you know, the message for his hour wasn't the message in William Branham's hour. The, the dispensations are built upon the fact that there were reformers or prophets. Branham got a lot very confused about whether they were reformers or prophets, so we'll leave that alone. We were asked as an example why we don't feel led to be pastors and I have made this statement before I'm not I'm not led to be a pastor uh, I was ordained as a minister I don't feel led to be a pastor and and so Donnie Reagan in his latest outburst said well if you're a Christian if you're a Christian you're led to do these things well let me give you a tip Donnie here's what I'm led to do okay I have a lot on my plate right now trying to pay attention to people who have left the message and trying to help them understand that they didn't leave God they left the false teachings of William Branham and Donnie Reagan and Ed Biskell and Jason Watkins and Tim Pruitt and 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 Noriega and Perry Green and Vin Dial and Lee Vale and there are people that are devastated and crushed because of the way you've treated them. Now we just talked about how the Bible says we're supposed to treat people that are Christians. Now there are generally two sorts of people that leave a message assemblies. Here's what happens generally after somebody leaves. They go into a period of time where they say if this is Christianity I want nothing to do with it. And a lot of those persons turn, I won't say atheistic, but they turn agnostic. They basically say, I don't want anything to do with joining a church. I don't want anything to do with even following a church or being involved in a church. If this is fellowship in a church, if the way I was treated by asking questions and being told to get out of the church, if that's the way Christianity behaves, I don't want anything to do with it. Can you be shocked? Can you be shocked that there are shattered people like that? There's a small group of people like myself who left the message and said, you know, I don't believe I'm leaving God. I need to understand more about God. And they find way, their way into, into study. They find their way through seminary. They find their way through churches. They find their way through people like us who say, hey, you know what? You didn't leave God. You didn't leave God. You left a false message taught by a false prophet put forward again and again and again and again by ministers who teach a false message or false prophecy. 
Now we go back to taking a look at First Peter chapter three verses fifteen and sixteen. But honor the Messiah as Lord in your hearts. Always be rather ready to give a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. However, do this with gentleness and respect, keeping your conscience clear, so that when you're accused, those who denounce your Christian life will be put to shame. Donnie, we brought forward lots and lots of instances. We brought forth huge amounts of evidence that say, here's why what William Branham taught did not align with Scripture, taught directly what was opposed to the Word of God. Where William Branham lied using his self-proclaimed scriptural authority, that's thus saith the Lord. Well, where William Branham had visions and prophecies which did not come true. In other words, his, his words fell to the ground. We brought home instance after instance after instance, and we've asked the question, how is it that William Branham can be a prophet of God when those things took place? Not one response from you. Instead, what we hear is, you guys are all screwed up because you left the message, and by the way, where are your signs and wonders? Well, Donnie... We have instances where we brought people back to Christ who have left the message, I'm happy to say, who have recommitted themselves to Christ, not a false message. We've got lots and lots of instances of that. Now, we don't proclaim that we've healed people of curable diseases, Donnie. We certainly haven't cured anybody of malaria, as you stated some time ago you had done. We don't, we don't proclaim that kind of stuff because you're right. You know, that's not what, that, and again, that's not what I am led to do. I'm busy cleaning up your mess and cleaning up the mess of the ministers that are in the message that leave these people absolutely devastated by the things that you've said and the things that you've told them. And that's, you know, that's a real shame. We also have this thing, what does the Bible say about holding other ministers accountable? It says here in Galatians chapter 5, verse 7, you were running well. Who prevented you from obeying the truth? If you can see that William Branham taught things that, did, that directly opposed the word of God, if you can see that his visions and prophecies did not come to pass, that is, his words fell to the ground, if you can see that he lied using thus saith the Lord, how is it you continue to teach his doctrine? We also see, and you asked us about signs and wonders. Where are your signs and wonders? Well, in Matthew it talks a lot. Matthew chapter 12, 38 through 42. These are scribes and Pharisees teaching, teaching, uh, speaking directly to Jesus. Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. But he answered them, An evil and adulterous generation demands a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was in the belly of the huge fish three days and three nights, so the Son of Man will be in the heart of the earth three days and three nights. And he was. The men of Nineveh will stand up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it because they repented at Jonah's proclamations. And look, something greater than Jonah is here. The Queen of the South will rise up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it. She came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And look, something greater than Solomon is here. Right here. It has nothing to do with the message of William Branham. You notice, you notice that Jesus didn't say, oh, by the way, follow the message of your hour. Uh, you know, it's Donnie, you're unbelievable, buddy. But you're a gift. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. <clears throat> and I'm going to let you read that. It talks about different gifts, different spirits, different ministries, but the same Lord. It talks about different gifts, but the same Spirit. Why then, when people leave your message and say, it's not that I'm leaving God, I have faith in God, I'm confused right now, because boy, is there a lot of confusion between the message and, and scripture. It's not that people are not, they get it, they're confused. Same spirit, same Lord. Why is it that, and, you know, so let me give you some examples of what we are busy doing. There's one minister, that, I'm going to give you some examples, not by name, but there's some minister, there's one minister particularly, he decided that couples who married outside of his the pastor's consent 
or without the pastor being involved in setting that up. Okay, Those people weren't placed together by God. You know, the wedding vows. I'm sure you've said this several times. What God puts together, let no man place asunder. Here this minister said, well, you couldn't have been placed by God because I wasn't involved, so you weren't placed there by God. Had no compunction of breaking marriages up. Has broken several marriages up. He had no issue in actively and covertly breaking marriages up. Because God didn't do that. See, somebody disobeyed him, so he had no problem destroying that relationship. There were ministers who, when leave, people leave their assembly, they say, we're taking you out from under the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, first things first, it's not his blood, so we can't take them out from underneath it. Jesus says, you're placed under the blood. Apostles and disciples say you're placed under the blood of Jesus. God says, Jesus, God will not forsake you or abandon you. And this minister, this message minister, has the temerity to say you're out from underneath the blood of Jesus. It's not his blood. How in the world can he take somebody out from underneath something that isn't his? Unbelievable. And so the question on those people's mind is, oh my goodness, are we saved? Well, so we have to walk them through the common salvation. How are you saved? Profession of faith, right? What do you believe? If you believe that you're saved because of the message of William Branham, you may not be saved. But if you believed you're saved because of the profession of faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, according to this, according to the Bible, you're absolutely saved. Huge confusion that these message ministers send. And you wonder what we're busy doing, Donnie? You wonder why we don't go out and heal people and have campaigns and, and you know, pastor churches? Oh my gosh, there's so much carnage that you message ministers, you, Donnie, and other message ministers cause, there's so much confusion right now. It's unbelievable. It, it, there are such confusions as an example, there's just denominations. And, and, the, and one of the real questions that we find is, which message denomination is correct? It, and I'll give you some examples. You've got the progressive revelation denomination. They think, don't pay any attention to what Branham said before the seals, because he didn't have the full revelation. Branham got corrected as time went on. He said something, that's thus saith the Lord, and then later he went back and talked about something else, but he really didn't have the correct revelation. So pay no attention to anything prior to the seals, 1963. Before that, not relevant. Here's our challenge. Branham said, that's thus saith the Lord, 1,616 times in over 1,100 sermons. Many of those sermons and many of those thus saith the Lord's occurred prior to 1963. What are we supposed to take from that? Are we supposed to believe that thus saith the Lord from those is not true? How can we reliably count on thus saith the Lord after that revelation of the seven seals? <laughs> Remember when we talk about Samuel, Samuel, none of Samuel's words were allowed to fall to the ground. None. Zero. Nada. Nip. None. So those, thus saith the Lord's prior to 1963, how does that work? We have a reversed, or a, uh, excuse me, we've got a uh, um, return ministry denomination and essentially their doctrine says well and at least look at least they're being honest they're saying some of William Branham's prophecies did not come to pass have not yet come to pass but William Branham's going to raise from the dead before Jesus comes back and he's going to fulfill all those prophecies there's an airplane sitting on a tarmac it was kept up for years and years and years as airworthy the guy that was supposed to fly the airplane kept certification in that particular aircraft years and years I don't know if he still does years and years and years that airplane has been packed with a great big tent and all the logistical supplies they need to go over to Africa to hold a tent meeting because Branham said thus saith the Lord 30 times that that tent meeting was going to take place and finally had to come back and say you know what uh, couldn't get the right visa. But at least they understand that the visions and prophecies didn't come to pass. They just think Branham's going to come back 
again and then before Christ comes to you know to fulfill all those prophecies that failed there's a group of people in Africa who are <clears throat> they follow William Branham because they believe and and it was astonishing to them that William Branham's first wife died before he made married a second wife it was astonishing to them unbelievable they they follow polygamy boy they teach polygamy because that's what brother Branham taught they had no idea that hope had died prior to marrying Mita they thought he married hope he married Mita voila polygamy two wives had no idea that there was a death in the middle of that somewhere but that group uses two marriages by William Branham to support their belief in polygamy to this day then there's the seven thunders oh my goodness William Branham wasn't the last prophet okay they got ministers that basically you know they proclaim themselves as the last the capstone minister the real prophet who's gonna come right before the the coming of Christ so those people in those assemblies not only do they have to pay attention to Branham but now they also have to pay attention to another minister and what if that minister teaches stuff that doesn't align with Branham let alone align with the Word of God now you got huge confusion who do I believe do I believe the capstone minister do I believe Branham do I believe the Bible massive confusion in that particular denomination and there's open warfare among the ministers one minister wrote a book essentially saying you know that other minister over there who claims to be the capstone minister doesn't know what he's talking about there's open warfare among the ministers in that denomination how nice for the message then we got Perusia William Branham was the physical manifestation of God this is the Lee Vale Christ Branham you know they there's the denial of the deity of Jesus Christ he wasn't a deity so this thing that we so no wonder the spirit is different because now there's a manifestation of of God with William Branham on the earth while William Branham ministered so that sacrifice that God that Jesus made is no longer relevant unbelievable and and that's here how does one justify that being here but that's a denomination within the message and there are pe people come out of that and they're amazingly confused can you understand why they might be confused do you understand why there's a, a whole vacuum created when people leave the message unbelievable <clears throat> so the biggest is you know we, look we've got ministers that hoard millions of dollars you talk about a, you talk about a, a revenue stream holy mackerel there's a there's ministry in Trinidad in the papers not not don't take it from my word read the read the local paper in Trinidad this guy hoarded hundred dollar notes fifty dollar notes Trinidad dollar notes hundred dollar Trinidad fifty dollar Trinidad twenty dollar Trinidad when it came time to turn in the hundred dollars because they were being easily counterfeited he showed up with bankers boxes full of one hundred dollar Trinidad notes that he'd been had it just have happened to have in his house the equivalent of two point something million dollars US in Trinidad dollars as you can imagine the authorities in Trinidad said wait 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 what do we got here well, these are tithes and offerings. These are, you know, I got these from my congregation. Millions of dollars hiding in the guy's house? Well, he, this is Trinidad. This isn't Monaco. The people that live in Trinidad need the money. It's an economically, you know, it's, it's hit by a hurricane, you know, every time one decides to sweep through. And you got millions of dollars stashed in your house. Why aren't you helping the people inside of your assembly with those millions of dollars? People leave the message, they're totally disenchanted because here we got, you know, geez, we're in such horrible shape and we got a minister that's got millions of American dollars in his home. Hasn't bothered to, I mean, couldn't even bother to get rid of him. Trinidad government went in and raided his house. Lots and lots and lots more money, not in $100 notes. But lots and lots of more money stashed away in bankers boxes and this is the message of William Branham well so let me take a step back clearly it is because here's the deal 
We've got a family, Voice of God recording in the Branham family. Unbelievable. These guys are hundreds of millions of dollars of revenue. And they don't even care that William Branham didn't tell the truth. Here's a statement made by Joseph Branham. This was made, as a, as a matter of fact, this statement was made on, let me see, March the 24th, 2019. This is a, the, the if you go to take at the Branham Voice of God recording site, the Branham Tabernacle site, excuse me, and you look at the preliminary uh, discussion from Joseph Branham on the 24th of March, 2019, starting at about the 14 minute and 59 second mark, this is what Joseph Branham said, quote, we can just sit back and relax and just enjoy what we're hearing. It doesn't matter. We don't have to have our guard up and you have to do nothing except for saying amen. Amen, he says, the bride says amen to every word. What did the angel of the Lord say? Now this is, this is key. Get the people to believe you. Hold it. The angel said, get the people to believe you. It's interesting that the angel didn't say, get the people to believe the word of God. Instead, it's get the people to believe you. Get the people to believe you. So when they're trying to make you doubt, well, the prophet didn't say this, he didn't say this, he made a mistake here, he made a mistake here. I don't care if it's a barefaced lie. Again, I'm quoting Joseph Branham. I don't care if it's a barefaced lie, if the world can prove it. I believe it. The angel said, get the people to believe what you said. Amen. We believe it. That's a quote from Joseph Branham. <clears throat> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So how do we know? We just we want to go back. I want to clarify. I want to make absolutely certain that everybody realizes how we know William Branham's message is a false message. First of all, he taught things which directly oppose the word of God. Second, he lied using the name of the Lord, his self-proclaimed scriptural authority, thus saith the Lord. And Remember, Joseph Branham says, we don't care if you lied. We don't care if you can prove he lied. Doesn't matter. We're going to believe it anyway. $100 million, you know, in their, in their liquid assets. If you take a look at their tax filings, I, you know, why wouldn't, you know, why wouldn't you say that? $100 million is a lot of money. Third of all, Branham spoke of visions and prophecies which failed to come to pass using his self-proclaimed scriptural authority. Thus saith the Lord. Now, after knowing all of this, after understanding how you're supposed to treat people, people that don't believe in your message didn't leave God. They left the false teaching of William Branham. That's our ch challenge, is to help those people understand that, that the message of William Branham, as they began to discover for themselves, isn't scriptural. It has very little to do with the Word of God. People didn't leave the word of God. They left a false teaching of a false prophet. Knowing that, and you can't, by the way, I've asked you, hey, let's sit down and have a discussion about that. You have not once defended the things that we pointed out about William Branham, about having taught things which were directly opposed to the word of God. You have not once agreed to sit down and talk with us about him lying using the name of the Lord or about his visions and prophecies which failed to come to pass when he said, Thus saith the Lord. You haven't, you haven't talked about that? It's interesting. You can beat us up and tell us, boy, are we just, you know, we're just nothing. We're reprobates. We're, we're apostates. You, boy, you've used that a lot. We're apostates. We're reprobates. We're backsliders. Right? What do we do? What, boy, if you're going to listen to me, you need to follow, you know, you're going to have signs and wonders you're going to follow. Well, that's great. Some of the signs and wonders are the people that I spoke about earlier who left mis ministry or who left, uh, you know, message churches have come back and reunited themselves to Christ, have recommitted themselves to the, to the common salvation, the one true gospel of Jesus Christ, without the additions of the extra scriptural and sometimes anti-scriptural message of William Branham. At best... William Branham's message is extra scriptural. At worst, it's anti scriptural. And there have been many, many, many people who you, Donnie Reagan, and other ministers just like you 
have sent out into the world hurting because you treat people abominably when they leave your assemblies. You mentioned it in the video that I showed at the beginning of the clip. Unbelievable. So why is it that you berate us when you have no answers? When you have no ability to demonstrate where what William Branham taught anything close to Scripture? Anyway, I, did, I wasn't going to do this video. We're 35 minutes into it. I'm, I'm going to get you out of here and, and let people go. I, I just wanted to be very, very clear here. We believe... And thank goodness for the for some of us that come out of the message that know they haven't left God. But there are a lot of people who don't have the ability to, you know, they, boy, I cannot tell you how many people are chased away from Christianity or God by message ministers, Donnie, much like yourself when they leave the message. Shame on you and other ministers in this in the message for treating people like that. Anyway, love everybody. Just wanted to kind of make, just kind of to send this out very close to the video that talks about did William Branham teach what Paul taught. We're going to talk about that at length, but I wanted to make sure that I got this out. I And I got a little heated up. Again, comments are always welcome. Make sure you leave a comment if you'd like to do that. Um, God bless you. I sure hope everybody's having a great 2021, and uh, we we sure hope that everybody still that under people understand the you know Jesus Christ and the one true gospel of Jesus Christ. So, God bless you. Have a great afternoon. Talk to you later. Bye bye.